Hi guys and welcome to the Tanganyikan Fish Room Tour. Now we are back here to have a look at Jim Sinnott's Fish Room, amazing fish room. So apologies for the audio in my intro but there is a lot of tanks in here, a lot of running water and I was not about to ask him to turn everything off just for me. So I will get a mic at some point, I promise. Hi guys and welcome back to the Herd Wave and look where we are again we are back we are back and have I got some beautiful beautiful fish to show you so since the last time I was here a lot has changed so I'm just going to give you another tour of everything that is here you might see some more favourites um, and you might see some new things that you have not seen before so, where should we start? Where should we start in here? I just, again, again, I'm blown away. Blown away by this place. Let's just get started. Okay, let's see some fish. Let's show you some fish. So I'm going to start with the biggest fish in the fish room. And these are the blue Zaire front oars. Now a Tanganyika fish room too just wouldn't be complete if I didn't show you these guys. Not because I'm biased and because these are my favourite fish of all time but because they're absolutely breathtaking, the stunning fish. Now the way they just glide through the water is really something special to watch. But don't let the sheer beauty and the gentle look of these fish fool you into thinking that they're not monster fish, because they are. If you don't get the balance right in your tank, these guys will do some serious damage to each other. So just putting that out there, just because they look super cute and super friendly towards each other, it's still a hierarchy system, so you have to get the balance right. Oh, and here he is. He is, he's just so beautiful. And you can see the markings on his head. So that gives you an indication of how old this fish actually is. It is hard to say the exact age of these fish with them being the wild caught group but they all were caught at the same time but that doesn't really give an indication of how old they are. They all could have been different ages. You can see the different sizes but definitely the larger guy. You can tell he is a fully grown adult male. Not only from the markings that's on his head but the sheer size of him and the length of his trailers as well. Now one of the main factors into why these fish have such long trailers is to either keep them in a species only tank or keep them in with the correct tank mates and be very selective on the tank mates you actually keep them with. As you can see these front oars share a tank with this very unusual fish. This is a Tanganyikan species and these are very very rare in the aquarium hobby. This is a Nanthochromis and these can be kept in a group however because they are so rare and so hard to get your hands on you'd be very very lucky if you could get a group of them if not what I would suggest is that you're very selective with the tank mates that you actually put them in with I will do a video at a later date on these very rare unusual fish so watch out for that guys so in these next two tanks we have the Antelampologus calvus and we have the daffodil cichlid Neolampologus pulcher. So I did cover these in my last Tanganyikan fish room tour. So I'm not going to say too much about them. I'm just going to let you enjoy them. So these guys are new. Now I didn't show them in the last Tanganyikan fish room tour. So these are pretty special. They are just amazing little fish. They're so beautiful. And believe it or not, these are actually still juveniles. 
Now just ignore the trophies in the background, if that's at all possible, just for one moment, and we'll concentrate on these fish. So these are Petrochromus, and these are the red bullo point. And yes, they are juveniles. So they haven't yet developed into those adult colors, which will be this fiery red color. They still have this very, very beautiful still, yellowy blue color to them, which I don't know about you, but I don't mind looking at them like this at all. These are just right up my alley. They are beautiful. Now these fish kind of have the best of both worlds because they do really appreciate some rocks in there, like a good rocky skate, but they are also open water swimmers. So it is really important that you get that balance right in your tank so that they are gonna have most amount of space so they can just swim, but they can also hide in the rocks because that is, that is what they like doing. Now it's important to note that these are in with Trophius, they're in with the Ujiji Trophius. However, because these are juvenile Petrochromus, you can get away with putting them in with the Trophius. When they do get larger and they start reaching adulthood, they are going to have to be moved because they're not going to do very well with them. They do share the same diet requirements, so they are omnivores and do like a little bit of insect protein, not too heavy on the insect based protein and definitely no meat based protein. Okay, heading around to the tank that's in the middle and these are just amazing. Last time, these weren't in here. These were different fish that was actually in here. But these ones are again, another super rare fish in the hobby. Now these go by a newer name, which I will pop on the screen for you here. But if you have been in the hobby for quite a few years, you will know them as Trophius Yellow Morago. Now there are various different types of Morago, and at least where I am in the UK, the Yellow Morago are super hard to get hold of. Not as rare as the Green Morago, those you just cannot get for the money. But these ones, again, are super rare. These are in a species only tank and this is for various different reasons. One of the main reasons being that these are wild caught fish, so erring on the side of caution, what parameters, trying to keep them as happy and healthy as possible is one of the main reasons. But another reason would be to breed these fish, so as you can see they do have fry in there. So this is absolutely brilliant for the fish keeping hobby and hopefully it won't be too long before you see them in my fish room as well. All right, now here we go. So this fish tank, this is kind of a sneak peek at what is gonna be in my new fish room, the size of actual tanks. Most of the new ones anyway, that's gonna be in there. I'm still gonna have my older tanks. The newer ones are gonna be this size, this shape, and pretty much looking like this as well. Now these fish are equally as amazing as well. I mean, look at this girl, she is just beautiful. These are Tanganyikan feather fins. Now there is different varieties of feather fins. So to be honest, we're not entirely sure what these kind are. These were given to Jimmy. So if anybody has any ideas, just drop me a comment and let me know what you think they are. Now, also in with the feather fins, we have some more trophy species, and these are the muzzy cherry rainbows. Now, you might see a lot of similarity between these fish and also the red rainbows, the kasanga, basically because they both are mori species, and they do look a lot similar. Okay, so now we're going to move around to this side of the room. And if you see here, these are Coryza, so we have another species of Coryza in here. However, these are Icola. Now, they do look a lot similar to the black Coryza, which I will show you a little bit later. But these are, in fact, Coryza, so very, very similar in colour patterns. They are the black and yellow and beautiful little fish. And these fish have exactly the same care requirements as what Golden Coryza and Black Coryza would have. And now here we go. These are some beautiful, beautiful fish. Now these are juveniles still. A lot of people in the hobby call these blue-eyed cichlid, but others call them Bishardi Asonga. Now there are quite a few different types of Bishardi trophies. 
I do actually have the bull and bora in my fish room which they do look quite similar they still have those bright blue eyes and the difference is these fish will actually become a lot darker they will become a black color with still a little bit of hint of yellow in there but it is quite a dramatic change from what they look like when they're juveniles to what they look like when they are fully grown adults again this is one of those species of fish which look absolutely stunning and adorable in their juvenile colors as well as in adult colors as well but i wouldn't mind if they stop like this either All right, so we're gonna move over to this side of the fish room and I am gonna show you these again because I know I showed them in the last video, but I just love these fish. These are amazing. So these are the Bullet Point Red Trophies and they're just one of my favorite again. I think it's just the, the so vibrant, the colors of them. Really interesting fish. What I would probably recommend is keeping them in a species only tank because they can be quite aggressive so they don't really play well with others even other trophies basically so they are found in tanzania and um, they do need pretty much like a high floor i don't want to go into too much detail about water parameters and things like that um just because like this is going to be two it's not a species profile but yeah they are omnivores again um so insect based protein no meat based protein just like other species of trophies they are susceptible to bloat so it's not good for their digestive system just to put that out there All right, so I'm gonna head down to this bottom tank and these are the Golden Coriza. If you are slightly confused and wondering what the difference is between Black Coriza and Golden Coriza, not a lot, to be honest, just the difference in the colors. So Golden Coriza have basically been created through selective breeding of Black Coriza. So the fish that have more yellow pigmentation in their colors, that is what they would breed together they would breed two fish that have more yellow in them and this is just selective breeding over the years and this is how we have come to know golden coriza as what they are so they are not found in the lakes you can find them only in tank bread situations so just a little fact that if you're wondering i've never seen these golden coriza before or just wondering a little bit of back history on them that is how they were made if you want to get technical, you can call them hybrids, but I just prefer to call them their own species of golden coriza.
now we have the Trophius Moroi Calambo and these are still juveniles again so there isn't really a kind of set colour pattern for these types of fish you can see here that these do look to be sort of like darker and they do have a red colour to them but when they get older they can look a little bit lighter at least the females males sometimes can stop a little bit darker definitely when they're breeding they are going to stop dark so yeah these are kind of like one of those that look a little bit like rainbows but different colored patterns really that's the best way i can describe it so they are more right at the end of the day so quite a large selection in the more right group so you can kind of see where these fit in in that sense Okay, so in this tank we have some very unusual types of Tanganyikan species for you to see in here. We have some Cyprochromus leptosoma in here. So those are the ones that have the really, really long faces. A lot of people tend to say they look like sardines. They often get nicknamed the sardine cichlid. Um, but there is lots of different varieties of those in there. And also we have the Julie de Chromis and that is the Malari one. That is the one that you can see at the bottom. I will show him a little bit later on as well in his own tank. So you'll be able to see him in a little bit more detail and some really nice close-up shots of him. Alright, now we're going to look at the Red Rainbow Kasanga. And these are fully grown, guys. These are absolutely beautiful. Look at the colours on these. I mean... It's easy to see why these are called red rainbows because they're just all the different colours of the rainbow are absolutely stunning. I mean, look at that one. So now I know, again, I am biased because I do have these in my fish room, but I am going to show these again because why not? Who doesn't want to see these guys? Now, if you're thinking about getting these types of fish, what I would say is they do like a rocky landscape in there but also they are open water swimmers as well. So like some other trophies, you are gonna wanna have a little bit of a balance in there and like other tangy types of fish, that is what they're really gonna appreciate and you're gonna get the most out of them, having that sort of an environment for them. Now I'm not gonna talk too much over this because I do have lots of videos on my channel on these guys. So if you want more information on them, you can always check that out. So I'm just gonna let you enjoy this for a little bit. All right, next up we have a very, very beloved fish in the hobby, very well known as well. This is the Dubwasi Mazawa. If you were interested in these fish, I do have a video dedicated solely to this species on my channel as well. Okay, so these little fish that you're looking at right now, these are called Alana Cranus Dwinty and these ones are super super rare especially here in the uk and i was so excited to actually share these with jimmy because these were bred right here at the herdway of aquatics so that's something really special that i get to share these really rare fish with my friends and my fellow hobbyists so that is something that is really special to me
All right, so I've got some more Mirago here for you, and these are the Tanzanian Mirago. As I said earlier, these are really hard to get hold of, these Mirago. And I've shown you two lots. I've shown you the yellow Mirago, and I've also showed you the Tanzanian Mirago. Sorry, I don't have any green, but maybe next time. All joking aside, these are some really, really beautiful fish. Again, they are still slightly on the juvenile side, so they are going to colour up a lot more, but still absolutely gorgeous. Alright, now we have some more Coriza and these are the more traditional black Coriza. So these are super cute little fish and they are so placid. A lot of people tend to say that these are territorial and they are slightly aggressive. In my opinion, I would say that these are more of a placider species of trophies. Don't really tend to get much bother out with these. Very cute fish. All right, so I'm gonna show you the Julia de Cromus tank now. So there is different varieties of this species. You have lots of Julia de Cromuses, and this one is the Mark Smith eye species. It is super cute. If you were considering doing a communal Tanganyikan tank, this species would be absolutely perfect. Julia de Cromus sharing a tank with daffodil cichlids or even some calvus. They would be really good together. They do have the same dietary requirements, so not as strict on the protein what you would be with Trophius. So if you are sort of a beginner or you're just getting into Tanganyikans and Trophius is perhaps a little bit too difficult or you are a little bit worried about their protein levels and what to feed them ensuring that they don't get blood these species and the few others that i've mentioned would be perfect for a lovely little tanganyikan communal tank lovely vibrant colors i mean look at this gorgeous yellow color so absolutely perfect if you just want to start out with tanganyikans and you don't want to worry too much about dietary requirements so these are omnivorous fish, so that means you can basically feed them larvae, brine shrimp, those types of things. Not to be confused with species that require a higher level of meat-based protein. Okay, so I know technically this tank is not in the fish room, but you would be missing out if I didn't show you this. Now, these are Coriza, so we do have a mixture in here of black Coriza and golden Coriza. Also, we do have some lovely little clown loaches in there. Now, I'm not going to say too much about this tank, about the setup, because I do have a video that I will link above. That you can also check out if you want to see this tank in a more in-depth i'll show you all the filtration system and everything in that video so i'm just going to leave you with these guys and you can enjoy them
Okay guys, so that is it for another video. Hopefully you enjoyed this too as much as what I enjoyed making it. I've showed you some new fish that you've never seen before in this fish room. And I've showed you some old favorites. So don't forget if you are not subscribed to click that subscribe button, notification bell, to you know every time I upload a video. And with all that being said, don't forget to like, give it a thumbs up, all that jazz, and I'll catch you on my next one. Bye now.